Welcome all to this new video series that I'm starting with this video. This is based on the game design contest that was organized on the indiaboardgames.net website. The theme of this roll and write contest was Indian history. Today, we are featuring the first game that was submitted to this contest. It's a game by Chris Kingsnorth and is called The Artisans of the Taj Mahal. This game can be played by two plus players and is meant for gamers above the age of 8. Each game lasts around 15 minutes. In this game, you recruit craftspeople, construct the iconic mausoleum and maintain the monument's beautiful gardens, erect towering domes, intricate minarets and enormous archways to earn the most points and be declared master architect. I'm going to show you a quick walkthrough of how we play the game. Before that, let's look at the requirements. The game requires a player sheet per player. Each player also gets a pencil and you have two dice. The player sheet is beautifully designed and has the Taj Mahal laid out with different features. Your objective is to try and complete all the features and score the maximum points possible. Now each feature has a different way in which you can enter the numbers. For example, the arborist is where you need to enter two numbers and the sum of both these numbers must be equal to six. You also have a waterway engineer in which you enter three numbers and those three numbers can either be even or odd. Now we will show how the game works. So I'm going to be playing with my son. He's sitting on the left side and I'm going to be the one who's facing the camera. So let's go. To start the turn, any player can roll the dice and use the same dice values. There is a way to alter the dice value, but we'll come to that later. So the dice now shows 3 and 2. I'm going to go with the facade sculptor corresponding to the dice with the number 3. For the facade sculptor, all the values have to be identical. So I'm going to enter the value 2, which is the second dice value, and it looks like my son has done the same. Now we roll again. The dice shows the value of 5 and 1. So there are two choices here. 5 is another facade sculptor, which should all have equal values, or we can go with the feature 1, which is gardens and canals. And I'm going to go with the gardens and canals. It looks like my son is also going to go for the same. I will go for the waterway engineer. All three values for the waterway engineer should be either even or odd. Because I'm going to go with the feature 1, I have the 5 value on the dice left. So I have to go with odd values for the waterway engineer. I put down a 5 over there. Here is a nice little aspect of this game. If you can see the sides of your player sheet, you have trees. You can add water to the trees from the raindrops in the clouds when you enter a value in the gardens and canals feature. I'm going to provide water for one tree in this turn because I've added something in gardens and canals. I have to then mark off a raindrop and fill in one of these water drops. My son also does the same because we've done the same action and we both worked on the gardens and canals. Although what he has done is he's gone with 5 in the arborist. So in order to complete the arborist, he needs to add the number 1 in the future. We move on to round 3. And that's the same role. It's a 1 in a 5. So I think I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go with 5 in the water engineer. Because that brings me closer to having a waterway engineer completed. I will also add a drop to another plant. The dice of the roll were kind of outside the camera. It's a 1 and a 5. The thing about the plant is mentioned in the last bit of your player sheet. If you do not have all the plants watered, you will gain negative points for each plant that is not watered at the end. So we're thinking it's a good strategy to kind of get these covered now. Next round, it's a 1 and a 2 now. I could still play in the garden area and I'm going to go with one of the arborists. So the sum of the two values of the arborist have to be equal to 6. So I will use the number 2 value here. Then I get to add water to another fruit plant. 
what my son has done is that he's gone for the stonemason. So the stonemason, if you see at the bottom, you have the number two on the player sheet. And each value in that column or minaret must be lower than the value beneath it. So it's gone with one, which is quite sensible because you cannot get lower than that. Let's move on to the next rung. So that, now the dice have come up with two and four. So I can either go for a minaret or I can go for the one in the middle here, which has two different options. The one in the middle is called the calligrapher. For the calligrapher, the bottom value must be the sum of the two values above it. Or I can also go for the dome builder. For the dome builder, the middle value must be lower than the two values on either side. Quite a few choices there. I'm going to go with the dome builder for four and I'm going to put the two in the middle. It looks like my son is trying to complete a minaret by adding the number four. We move on to the next round. That's a one and a five. That works out quite well for me. I can fill a five for the waterway engineer and I can also add water to a plant in my garden. One thing that I like to mention now is that you only score points for a completed feature. So in this case, I have completed the waterway engineer because all three blocks are now filled in. My son enters a five for the waterway engineer and is nearing completion. He also decides to water a plant. Then we move to the next round. This is a four and a five. I would go for a facade sculptor with a 5 and I'll use that for now. My son does the same and we move to the next round. Now this is a 5 and 2. I could use the 2 to complete something in the stonemason feature. I have the number 5 at the end. And then we can roll to the next round. It's a 4 and a 2 to go with the 4 and a 2 could go up here. So in this round, my son cannot add a number in any feature. So what he needs to do is cross off one of the raindrops. Correction. What my son decided to do is modify the die value by cutting one of the raindrops and he got the 4 down to a 3 and he's completed his minaret. Let's move on quickly to the next round. And these and the dice have now shown two threes. In this case, I'm going to use a raindrop to convert one of those trees to a 2 and I can start filling up my facade sculptor. My son does the same. He needs to cut off one raindrop for changing the die value. Here's the next roll. Oh, a one and a five or a four. Can we go with a five? No, I can use one and try and risk it, but I'll go for a one and a five. So I'm going to have to change the four to a five. So I'm going to cut off one of the raindrops for watering the fruit plants in the garden. My son decides to go for modifying one more time and this and to fill up his minaret. Let's move on quickly to the next round then. And we get two fives. I do not need two fives. I will use a raindrop to convert one of the fives to a four. And it looks like my son has done the same. Moving on quickly to the next round, it's two sixes now. I'll go with that. So we go with six at the bottom of the minaret. Is it a 2 and a 4 now? 2 and a 4. Okay, I'm going to go with a 4 and I'm going to try this. I'm going to add 2.
yeah just to remind you the calligrapher the bottom value must be the sum of the two values above it there's a 4 and 2 i'm going to use one of my raindrops to make this a 3 on one of the die and use the value 2 to try to complete a facade oh again it's a 3 and a 4 now so time to think 3 and a 4 i don't need too many raindrops i'm going to risk this one or i'm just going to have to use the value 3 I can easily use the value three, so I'm going to go for three out of here on the four, because for the dome builder, the middle value must be lower than the two values on either side. All I need is a number greater than two after that. Let's move on to the next round. So four and a one. It's good for my son. It's got a He's got a one in the middle of the dome builder. I will use the one for the calligrapher. Six and a five now. I'm going to use it for one of my min minarets. And moving quickly on. So the five and a six. This one's getting a bit tricky now. All right. So I'll use one raindrop and modify one die value to four. Then I'll use my six for the dome. Junior is just modifying one value and he's doing the same for the dome builder. Let's move on to the next round. A four and a one. I like the four for one of the gardens and canal feature. I can then water my final fruit plant. Now it's a three and a five. I can go for modifying the die values of the three to four, and it looks like I'm going to be completing one of these at least. This is a one and a one. Now oh, my son has completed an arborist. I'm going to be struggling with this one. What I do is I take. A raindrop to modify the die value. One of the die value goes to two, and I'm going to use one right on top. So I've completed one of my stone masons. We are nearing the end of the game. Here's a six and a three. I'm going to do the easy thing and just go with the six, and use the value three. So I've completed another stone mason, but it looks like my son's struggling. He's only at his last raindrop, which will trigger the game end. And we move to the next roll. This is a six and a two. I don't think I can use that, so I'm going to just have to cut off one raindrop. This is also a requirement of the game. Cut off a raindrop if you cannot enter a number in any feature. Can my son use any of this? That looks like no. So he needs to cross off the final raindrop, which triggers the game end. The game also ends when there are no spaces. To enter the numbers, let's go talk about the scoring now. As I said before, you score points for only completed features. So if I start from the bottom, I'll get six points for the arborist. So I'll add that in the block located in the top portion of the player sheet. I'll get eight points for the waterway engineer. I'll get twelve points for the stone masons because each is worth six points. The facade sculptor gives me nothing. The calligrapher gives me nothing. The dome builder gives me an eight. So that's two zeros there. 
and it's very interesting because the facade sculptor has the most number of points on the player sheet. It's a bit tricky to get those points. Maybe we should have gone for those earlier. Because that there is no negative points for the garden element, we managed to provide water for all the fruit plants. Let's do some quick math now. So the total would be, let me add that up very quickly, that's 14 and 20, so I get 34 points. My son also gets 34 points. That's very interesting. Let's look at the tiebreaker rules. The rules say that in the event of a tie, the youngest player wins. And given that my son is younger than me, he wins this game. So thank you for watching this gameplay of the Artisans of Taj Mahal, an entry in the India Board Games Roll and Ride Contest by Chris Kingsnorth. Thank you Chris for a wonderful game.